Hello everyone, welcome to Grammar English Lesson video. This is your teacher, Hiba. And for today's lesson, as you see, we're gonna look at a very common grammar lesson, which is the present continuous. This tense also called the present progressive. So a verb form used in modern English that combines the present tense with the continuous aspect. Our lesson today is very easy. I mostly explain everything in a simple way and try to keep it as simple as it could. So pay good attention to the details that we'll cover today and really try to learn it simply. Before we get started with this lesson, let's talk about the structure to learn present continuous tense. I believe that in order to really learn a present continuous, you need to know the form and the use of this tense in deep way. So for each use that we present, I'll explain it with its timeline and with examples. In addition, I'll explain how to form yes or no question and WH question. Finally, I'll give you an action step to end this lesson, something you can do to help you remember this grammar lesson. So you can find this material in your action back, Unit 6, Student Book, page 69, and in your fifth worksheet, page 2 and 3. The main objectives for this video are to present the formation and the use of present continuous, to practice the present continuous tense to talk about action happening at the time of speaking, to practice the present continuous tense to talk about an ideal holiday. So, we're gonna look at a very common question in English. So often, when you're talking with your friends and you're interested in their activity, at this moment, we can ask this question, what? are you doing because this is a common question and we use it in present continuous tense so let's get started to know about this tense deeply to understand the present continuous tense better we need to have a look at its form so if i ask you how do we build the present continuous your answer will be we can form a present continuous sentence as the following subject plus verb and our verb here consists of two parts helping verb and the main verb so you should use the correct form of verb to be as a helping verb and the main verb in a continuous form that means you should add ing at the base form of the verb which reinforces the idea that this action is continuous and in progress. And then you can add your object or the complement of this sentence. So as you can notice here, we have two cases, affirmative and negative. All of us know that affirmative means a positive statement, while negative focused on what is bad or lacking. So we use not in this case to express the negative function. So look at the example here. Mary is arriving at 7 or 8 o'clock today. Mary isn't arriving at 7 or 8 today. So isn't here is abbreviation of as and not. We add not at the helping verb in order to get the negative sentence with the negative function. So our note here is we should use verb to be in the present. So if you notice and ask yourself what are the main principal parts of be verb in the present, you can find that we have three main principal parts, which are am, is, are. But we notice that we should use am with the subject to pronoun I is with the subject to pronouns he, she, it, or the nouns that are related to these pronouns, or with the subject to pronouns they, you, and we. I think we previously discussed first, second, and third person singular and plural pronouns, so it's obvious for you because we covered this lesson during our class lessons. 
for the present continuous tense, you need to add ing to the paste form of the verb. But it's not always that easy. Therefore, today I'll give you six simple rules for adding ing to a verb. So, number one, you should ask yourself, does it end with vowel consonant E? For example, have. In this case, you should drop the vowel when add ing onto a verb. It becomes having. Number two, does it end with long vowel? For example, do. In this case, you should add ing onto a verb. It becomes doing. Number three, does it end in one vowel followed by a consonant? For example, sick. In this case, you should double the consonant then add ing onto a verb. It becomes sitting. Number four, does it end in ie? For example, lie. In this case, you should change them into Y, then add ING into a verb. It becomes lying. Number five, does it end in Y? For example, enjoy. In this case, you should add ING into a verb, and it becomes enjoying. And the last one, all other verbs, such as rest, you should add ING into a verb. It becomes resting. These are rules of adding ing onto a verb. So now, let's move to the use of present continuous. Present continuous tense can be used in different ways, and today we're gonna to discuss how to use it to describe an action happening now at the time of speaking. It didn't happen yesterday and it won't happen tomorrow. It's happening now. It's a continual progressive action which is continuous. So why do we have the current present continuous? Okay, that is why. So we have a diagram which is a timeline for present continuous tense to give you further reinforcement for this idea. The action probably started in the past, continuous until now. So, will it continue us for near future? Yes, probably, but that is not so important. So, have a look at these sentences I'm reading. The book Tom's Warren now. She's working on special projects at work at this moment. They are not watching television. These are actions which are happening now at Tom is speaking. And we have Time expressions which are used to talk about the actions happening now, such as now, at the moment, and right now. So, please focus on this video, learn and enjoy. It's so important to grammar video, so stay it tuned.
the second use of present continuous is for future arrangements with a time reference. So the future arrangement is a plan that you have decided and organized with another person. We have a diagram which is a timeline for present continuous to give you further reinforcement of the idea of future arrangement. The action probably started in the past and it will continue us for near future. Now have a look at these sentences. I'm meeting some friends after work. He's visiting his parents next weekend. They are going to the party tonight. These are the actions which are expressing the future arrangement. And we have the time expressions also, which are used to talk about the future arrangements, such as this week, after week, next week, and tonight. And now focus on this video, learn and enjoy. It's so important to grammar video, so stay at tuned. Saturday, Rob. I'm working all day on Saturday. What are you doing on Sunday? I'm not working on Sunday. I don't have any plans. We're going to the cinema. Do you want to come with us? Yes, please. And now, interrogative and WH questions. We can form yes or no question by exchanging between the subject and verb to be with adjustments if required. Our note here is don't forget adding a question mark at the end of your question. So we have two examples here. The first one he is playing football now. So we should change between the subject and verb to be to form the question. And our question here is, is he playing football now? Our answer will be yes or no. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. The second example here, I'm traveling to Dubai this week. But you should ask yourself, can I ask about myself? So, I can't ask about myself, so this is adjustment that I talked about. So, how we can treat with this sentence? How can I ask? Are you traveling to Dubai this week in order to have a correct answers? Yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Now, it's back to our question, what are you doing now? You're listening to me, you're learning English, I'm teaching, you are present continuous or I'm having coffee. You can't see. So you can notice that our answers are a full sentences. So we should learn the differences between yes or no question and WH question. So we can form WH question by adding WH word and then exchanging between the subject and verb to be with adjustments as required. So we have WH words. We use it to ask a certain types of the questions and each word has its own function, such as what to ask for information about something, when to ask about time, which to ask about choice, where to ask about place. So when you form WH question, you should focus on the things that you want to ask about. So look at this example, please. And before our example, we have our note that don't forget adding a question mark, okay? 
So our example here, they are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. So if I want to ask about the subject they, before I change between the subject and our verb to be, I should choose the W as a question word. But you should notice that in this case, I omit the subject. I can't use it because the subject is my answer. So the suitable question here is, who are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning? Our answer is they are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. And if I want to ask about the action, our meeting, so our question will be, what are they doing tomorrow morning? Our answer will be a full sentence. They are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. And if I want to ask about David, who is a person, okay? So I should use who or whom. So our question is, who are they meeting at the train station tomorrow morning? And our Answer is they are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. So here, if I want to ask about at the train station, so the suitable W at the question word is where, because I want to ask about the place. So where are they meeting David tomorrow morning? So our answer will be they are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. And the last thing that I can ask about is tomorrow morning, about the time. So the suitable W at the question word will be when. When are they meeting David at the train station? So our answer will be they are meeting David at the train station tomorrow morning. So we can conclude that as you can notice that the answer of WH question is always a full sentence, while the answer of interrogative question is always yes or no. It's time to do some practice. During our practice time, you need to pause the video, then you need to write your answers in your worksheet. After that, go ahead and play the video again, and you'll check your answers along with me on the video. So group work, write the correct form of the verbs in the, in the brackets. The first sentence, the climber, the mountain right now. So our sentence here is about present continuous. So look at the subject here, the climber. Our subject or our subject to pronoun here is he. So I should use as and with as I should put not, isn't, and then I add ing to the verb to be climbing. So the climber isn't climbing the mountain right now. The second sentence, he arrests for a couple of hours. So he takes as, and then I should add ing to the place form of the verb to be taking. So he is taking the rest for a couple of hours. But all the members of the group, we have a plural. The members of the group, so the subjective pronoun for this is they. So the suitable verb to be here is are, and then I should add ing to the base form of the verb. And please be noticed that you should follow the rules of adding ing to the verb. And the next sentence, some photos of the view. So I takes am, I am taking some photos, photos of the view and certainly I should use ing with enjoy to be enjoying myself. So the climber isn't climbing the mountain right now. He's taking a rest for a couple of hours, but all the members of the group are dancing. I'm taking some photos of the view and enjoying myself. Now, pair work, form questions so that the underlying parts would be the answers. The first one, yes. So you should 
from yes or no question. So in this case, you should change between the subject and verb to be as and from the question as, is Ali having a good time? Number two, the boys are setting up the tent. So we ask here about the action. So the suitable question that we should use, what are the boys doing? Number three, my mother is preparing lunch, so I want to ask about the subject. So the suitable WRT question word here is who, who is preparing lunch? Number four, no, I'm not, so I should form yes or no question, according to our sentence here. So the suitable question here is, are you sleeping? No, I'm not, I'm not sleeping, I'm watching a movie. The last one, he is walking down the street now. So I'm asking about the place. So the suitable WH question word is where, and then I should change between the subject and verb to be as the following question, where is he walking now? And our answer is he is walking down the street now. And we have an extra exercise here, solve the jigsaw puzzle and make up the sentences. So you can form a different sentence from these uh, jigsaw puzzle. And I'm writing some example here. Ahmed is meeting his friend tonight. Kat is playing with ball ball now. I'm traveling to UAE this year and we are rent studying for English this year. And you can write a lot of sentences here. This is the end for our lesson today. And you have a homework here and I think you can do it easily. And there at the end, you can spend your free time by practicing your new lesson in a pleasant way with Mr. Bean by helping him to form a sentences. And with the snakes and ladders game, wish you all the best and thank you.